Okay, today we're going to talk about Venn diagrams. Suppose that um, you're going to roll a die, okay? That's going to be our experiment. Suppose we, whoops, we roll a die. Okay, let's write down the sample space. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is rolling two dice. Let me fix that. And let me just be more specific and add the two numbers together. Okay, then what's the sample space? Um, well, in that case, I couldn't get a 1, could I? So the sample space would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That would be the sample space. Okay. Let's let A be the event that the sum is six or less. So I write A equals two, three, four, five, six. Um, but technically what I'm saying is A is the event that the sum is two or three or four or five or six. Okay. And let's let B be the event that the sum is a six, seven, eight, or nine. Okay, so I can represent this visually with something called a Venn diagram. You draw a rectangle for the sample space. Okay, and you draw a circle. It doesn't have to be exactly round. An oval or something like that is fine. Um, for the two events that you want to talk about here. So that will represent A. And then I draw another one to represent B. That's good enough. And they're overlapping, right? And why is that? Because A and B do overlap, don't they? Inside of A are the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It doesn't matter where I write those in that bubble. However, B contains 6, 7, 8, and 9. So the number 6 needs to be in this area here so that it is inside of the A bubble and also the B bubble. Okay. So I need to make sure I put the 6 there. And the 2, 3, 4, and 5 needs to be somewhere here. And the 7, 8, and 9 needs to be somewhere here. Okay, so let's do it like this. We'll write 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay. But there's more numbers in S besides those, aren't they? Aren't there? There's also a 10, 11, and 12. They're in S, but they're not in A. They're also not in B, so they need to be somewhere in the outside area. Doesn't matter where. So there you go. That's called a Venn diagram. Okay? And what does this area represent, by the way? That represents the intersection of A and B. You see, the intersection of A and B is the set consisting only of the number 6. What does this area represent?
That's the union of A and B. And it's containing 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. OK. Let me draw this Venn diagram and ask you some questions about it. A Venn diagram doesn't have to have two bubbles. It can have more or less. It all depends on how many events you're talking about. Now, what if I drew this And what if I told you that H stands for heads and T stands for tails? Then I suppose there might be more than one answer to this question, but I think I think there's one obvious answer. And the question I ask you is, what do you think that experiment is? So there's four possible outcomes. Heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, and heads, tails. So obviously that experiment must be somebody doing what? Flipping a coin. Okay. Now, look at what A is made up of. A is made up of tails, heads, and tails, tails, right? Let's go ahead and write that down. A is the set containing tails, heads, and tails, tails. If you had to describe A in words, what event would you say A is? I suppose you could say A is the event of tails heads or tails tails, but there's a much simpler way to describe it. Can you think of the way? I would say A is the event of getting tails on the first coin. That's what I would say. Oh, by the way, I said they're flipping a coin, right? I forgot to say the word twice. They're flipping a coin twice or two different coins. But it's better, I think, to say flipping a coin twice because if you're flipping two different coins, that's that's perfectly fine. And this in this experiment might be that. But then you have to decide of those two coins, which one is going to be called coin number one and which one's going to be called coin number two. To think of it as flipping the same coin twice is a little bit easier because then there's actually a first and a second. Okay, so in this case, I would say A is the event of getting tails on the first flip. How would you describe B? B consists of tails, tails, and heads, tails. How would you describe that event in words? I would say B is the event of getting tails on the second flip. What is A intersect B? It contains only tails, tails. So what's that event? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's the event of getting tails twice. And what is A union B? It contains tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails. How would you describe that event in words? That might be a little bit harder. You know how I would say it? I would say that is the event of not getting two heads. That's the simplest way to describe it. Okay, let's move on. All right, I don't know if these numbers are accurate or not. I'm just taking them right out of the book. This is going to talk about blood types and whatnot. You know how when you find out your blood type, there's a letter and a positive or negative sign, right? The letters can be O, A, B, or AB. That's 
what's called your blood type is the letter and then the positive or negative that goes with it is called the RH factor okay now this information on um, page 166 what actually starts on 165 is example 3.29 okay here's what they say they say that again I don't know if this is accurate or not it's just what's written here it says that uh, well this part I know is accurate it says if you have O negative so your blood type is O and your RH factor is negative then you can donate blood to any person with any blood type or RH factor okay it says here 4% of African Americans have blood type O and a negative RH factor. So that's 4% of African Americans have O negative blood. And then it says, we're going to go with this number. It says 5 to 10%. We're going to just go right in the middle and say 7.5% of African Americans have a negative RH factor. 51% have blood type O. I better write this down. It's a lot to remember. Okay, so it says 4% of African Americans have O negative blood. It says 7.5%. Again, it technically says 5 to 10%, but I want to use a single number here, so we're going to just take the average of those. Okay, 7.5% of African Americans have RH factor negative. Blood. And the third piece of information is 51% of African Americans have type O blood. Whoops. Okay, so what I want to do with you is make a Venn diagram for this and answer a few par probability questions. Okay, so let's make a diagram here. So here, this bubble here will represent type O. I'll just put O. And this bubble will represent negative RH factor. We'll write RH negative. Okay. Let's put some percentages in our diagram. Now, it says, let's start at the bottom. It says 51% of African Americans have blood type O. What if I wrote 51% here? That's technically not wrong, okay? But it kind of is. You'll see what's wrong in a minute. All right, 7.5% of African Americans have RH factor negative blood. So what if I wrote 7.5% here? And then it says 4% of African Americans have O negative blood. Where would that belong? Well, that means type O and also RH factor negative, right? So that's the intersection that would go here. 
Do you see what's wrong here? According to what I've written, what percentage of African Americans would have type O blood? Well, according to what I've written, it would be 55%, wouldn't it? Because the 51% and the 4% are both in the O circle. So that's a total of 55%. It's not supposed to be, though, is it? It's supposed to be 51. You see, these people, this is what I'm trying to say, these people here that make up that 4%, they are also among these people, right? The 4% with O negative blood are part of the 51% with type O blood. See what I'm saying? So what I should do is, in the Venn diagram, of those 51% with type O blood, 4% of them are already accounted for there, which means out here, I should really be writing what? 47%. No, that's not right. Yes, it is. Sorry, doing my addition wrong. That's 47%. So now in the O bubble, what's the percentage? It's 51%. 4% of the O people have negative RH factor, which must mean that there's 47% of the population that has O blood but is not negative, so they would be what? They would be the O positive people. Okay, and that 7.5% should really not be 7.5%, should it? Let me put it back, because what's the problem with that? then that would lead us to say that there's 11.5% with RH factor negative because the 4% of people, again, here, are part of that 7.5%. The way I have the Venn diagram written right now, I'm counting that 4% twice. I'm double counting them. I don't want to do that. This part out there should be only 3.5%. Now the Venn diagram is correct. And let's answer some questions. The book says, what's the probability of O? Um, in other words, really what they're saying is, what is the probability that if you randomly selected somebody from the African-American population, what's the probability that that person would have type O blood? Okay? And... What's the answer? The answer is 0.51. What's the probability of... So here they're getting in the book a little bit lazy. They're just writing R. Okay, that's fine. In the diagram, we'll change that just to an R. Okay, uh, what they're saying here is... If a person is selected randomly from the African-American population, what is the probability that they would have negative RH factor blood? And what's the answer? The answer is 0 0.075. Okay, and then it asks, what's the probability of O intersect R? That means if a person is randomly selected from the African-American population, what's the probability that they would have O negative blood? And we know that answer, too, is 0 0.04. Okay, now here's one. All of those answers are right there in the diagram, aren't they? Here's one that's not. It says, what's the probability of O union R. That means if someone's selected randomly from the African American population, what's the probability that they will have type O blood or negative RH factor? Well, that's all of this. So what do those add up to? 
that's 54 and a half percent right so point five four five And it gives two other questions too. It says, in the diagram, describe the overlapping area using a complete sentence. Well, we already did that when I read this question here. That's this area here, right? What is that? That's the percentage of the African American population that has O negative blood. But then they ask another interesting question. They said, describe this area out here. Whoops, I want another color. They say, describe this area out here. What would that be? Well, that's the percentage of the African American population, first of all, right? But what description there? there that's the stuff that's the, the people that are not in circle O, and they're also not in circle R. So how would you describe that? There's more than one way. I guess I would say that's the portion of the African American population that does not have blood type O, and does not have negative RH factor. So personally, I would say does not have blood type O and has positive RH factor. So that would be the people that have A positive, B positive, AB positive. Okay? All right, so Venn diagram is pretty straightforward, not a whole lot to it. I'm just quickly scanning through to see if there's anything more we need to do. Okay, I think that's all we need to go over for this uh, topic. So have a good weekend, and I'll be back again next Monday.